If you know your why, you'll find your way in life. I found an incredible video that I want to react to. This guy's name is Ken Costa. I heard this on the radio driving to my brother's wedding. And I want to react to it today. One of the things that's going to come up is your motivation and your drive to actually get to where you want to be. That is covered beautifully by this guy. A couple things I got a little weird about, but let's watch it. Let's enjoy this, okay? If you know your why, you'll find your way. In life. So that's a motivational statement, but it is important that like motivation occurs after you've already had some sort of direction. So you need to ask the question, what started you down a certain path? God wants to have an intimate relationship with you and he wants to be not only your father, your friend, and your commanding general, but God has a good plan for your life. And if you seek after the Lord and he gives you a good direction for your life and you start from that basis that's your why and then you can move forward what do you mean by the word why what i mean by the word why is that deep inner conviction that the spirit of god puts upon the people of god that they matter to god in all aspects of life let's say you feel stuck in your job you feel stuck where you're at and you don't feel like you matter you have to ask the question first and foremost who led you to that position if my desires and my actions and my decisions led me to where I'm at, then yeah, I have nothing to stand on. But if God led me to where I am and I'm struggling in the moment, don't don't disparage. Don't don't get discouraged. Not just in the church aspect. Hmm. And that's what I really mean. There is a there is the spirit that's working long before people try and say, well, how will I serve God? Where will I serve God? When will I serve God? How long, oh Lord? But unless you tackle the why question, that there is a purpose to your life, those others become much more difficult to answer. If you're just going through this life and you have no idea the reason why you're doing what you're doing, you're just, you seem like you're stuck in this rut. There's hope for you. You can get out. You don't have to just be mindlessly going about your days. And when you come to know the father in heaven that loves you, you find that why. And when you're able to understand that this is the purpose of my life, to be in intimate friendship with my God, close to my father, and that he's going to step down and not like a punishing father say, go and do this thing and I'll judge you on how you do, says, I'm going to go do this thing. Will you join me? Community and that relationship with the Father, we find our purpose. We find our why. And we're able to go through hard things in this life because we have some sort of motivation behind it. We have a driving force that is stronger than the difficulties. And it's based in that relationship with God. Why do you think we, we separate those uh, attributes, um, our vocation, our spiritual walk, our family, why do we struggle integrating those well, under a faith umbrella? Well, that's a good question. I tell you why I think it is. I think that the world that we're living in is a very siloed world, very mm. atomized. Yes, absolutely. If you're not a believer in Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is probably not going to make as much sense to you. However, if you'd like to, there are principles that I think you can apply. So if you'd like to keep listening, I'd love to have you stick around. What he's talking about here is inside the church world, we have this idea that if you're a part of, if you're inside the church, there you're able to be a Christian and operate in your purpose. Then you go off and you do your work stuff and your work stuff and your church stuff are completely separate. But these two worlds are not meant to be separated. Like it's meant to be one thing. Like your relationship with Jesus Christ goes across your work situation, your church situation, everything. You shouldn't atomize, like he's saying, out those categories and say, God is only Lord of my life in this area or this area or this area. Like if you chose your career, I'm just gonna be blunt here. If you chose your career without any consulting to the father, I think you need to take a second and ask yourself, well, who's Lord of my life and my career? Is God the one that led me down this pathway or did I lead myself down this pathway? So how did you find your why and how is it defined? Well, it changes over a period of time. Hmm. You know, you, you need to find your calling. Some of us work for cash, nothing wrong with that. I've worked for cash. Some work for a career, nothing wrong with that. I've done that. Some work for a great cause, a, a great voluntary organization or not for profit as this one is. But if you don't work for a calling, if you don't know your calling, you will burn out. Absolutely. Okay. So I know a lot of people that just go from one opportunity to the next opportunity to the next opportunity, and you're just stuck wondering, okay, when's the next thing you're, you develop this like grass is greener on the other side type syndrome, essentially. So there's two different branches, right? So if your calling is established from God and you face hard times, then keep going. But if you're 
if your reason for doing things is established and like, oh, I felt like doing this or this was the job opportunity that I had, you're going to find yourself with no backing. There's no, like you're doing your job and your strength. And as a believer, your strength should be coming from the Lord. Like as a believer, you should come to the understanding that you have no strength to speak of. So go to the Lord, take the time. And if you're 20 years into your career, 30, 40, 50 years into your career, no judgment on you, but take a second you have breath in your lungs. What if 100% of your life was dictated by the leadership of Jesus Christ instead of only 10% of your life? Like, What if God has a good plan for you in 100% of your life? What are we really surrendering to God? And so what he's talking about here is seeking the Lord until you know what he's called you to do. Again, it's not a father saying, I'm going to go and do this thing and I'm going to punish you. It's a father saying, I want to do this with you. Come with me. Oftentimes when I'm meeting with the folks who support this ministry, um, sometimes they'll feel, um, I don't know, maybe that they're not as significant because they're not working directly in ministry, but they're doing banking, they're doing oil and gas, they're doing real estate. I think part of the reason why people have this disconnect between the church and the business world is that we've unintentionally sold them that model, that if you're at the church, that's where God is. If you're at business, earn money and support the church. So Ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 through 16 talk about a model inside the church in which the pastors are meant to be equippers and supporters for the saints of God. So there's a unique set of people that are set aside to teach truth, teach the gospel, and to unify us in the faith and to help us come to better knowledge of who Christ Jesus is. There's a specific group there, but their primary goal is so that the saints of God are equipped to do exactly what God is asking them to do, which means that they have to seek the Lord, figure out what is it that he's calling you to do that's unique. Your calling is different than my calling, but we're all supposed to be one body. My fingers can't be my toes. Be a very strange human who is just one giant toe. What if God had a unique calling for you? We we'll work together hmm. and we need to help each other to find our callings in life. Work together. Let's help each other find each other's callings. But then that core of that has to be prayer and seeking after the Lord. Like if I can say, oh, my calling is this because this person thinks I'm good at it. That's not directed from the Lord. Okay. Maybe the Lord sent that person to like help you nudge you in that direction, but you need to hear from God yourself. I remember making a thank you call for a gift here, focus. And uh, the donor couple on the other end, the husband said, you know, um, my wife and I appreciate the fact that you run focus effectively and efficiently for us to do ministry through you. No. All right. So some people are called to financially support larger ministries. That's okay. But I doubt that's everything he's called you to. Like we're all universally called to be discipling people towards Jesus Christ, meaning that I should be looking more like Christ every single day. But if I just release my calling to somebody else and just say, oh, but I gave him a thousand dollars this month. They're doing great things for Jesus. And then I don't look anything more like Christ. I'm missing something. And at first I went, yeah. uh, what? Yeah. But he's absolutely right. Absolutely. My goal yeah. is to run focus as effectively Brilliant. and efficiently as possible. So, good. so I have to disagree with him here. I, I, I'm not totally sure what he's trying to get at here, but it sounds like he's trying to say people's calling should be just to support their ministry. No, I think God's a little bit more creative than that. I love that Absolutely. concept. That's mm-hmm. very that good. puts, that yeah. knits it all together. It does. Uh, that the person it out does. doing the vocational thing, earning a living, yeah. and then supporting their church, supporting ministries like Focus. No, this is the big thing that I wanted to react to. This idea inside of the church world that your only calling in life is to support somebody else. It's not the way that Ephesians is actually laid it out. The Old Testament, you look at Israel. God ordained the Levitical tribe, the Levites, to be the high priests, to take care of the temple. And then there was 11 other tribes of Israel, and it was the whole of Israel that was meant to be this beacon of who God was to the nation. This Levitical tribe was not meant to be the sole source of information about who God was. Okay, It was supposed to be all the tribes, all 12 of them were supposed to be unified as Israel to reflect God to the nations. Just the same is true inside of the church. The people, the saints of God, all unified, pastors, teachers, evangelists, prophets, 
uh, shepherds, all with the saints of God, are to be a unified reflection of who the Father is, with all of us looking at the Father. However, there's this disconnect that's occurred where now we have pastors are over here. I just support them with my money, and they're the ones that are actually going to go out and do the ministry. That's not the way that God intended for it. If you go and read Ephesians chapter 4, go and read it. Read it right now. It, it gives the model for how the church is to become mature. Whereas I, you know, to look back on my career when I had my two or maybe three jobs, there is nobody in that millennial group that will not have six, ten, twelve Okay, so they're talking about how in the older generations, there was these, you picked one job and you just stuck with it. I'm sorry that that's the, what you had to do. I, I respect you and I honor you for doing that. But times do change and it's not wrong to look and find better options. However, going to the heart issue, outside of just these peripheral actions, like there's whatever, go to the heart. If you are bouncing place to place and place and place and place because you're unsatisfied or you're, you have FOMO, you fear of missing out, whatever, you need to stop and ask yourself a very simple question, which is what they're going to eventually get back to, which is why? Are you working? Are you working for you? Are you working because you've had an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ and you know exactly what he's called you to? What does God care the most about? He cares the most about your development of your heart. And if you understand the vision, the purpose of God is that his heart is that your heart and your soul becomes more of a reflection of him. Now it's no longer about what job I'm working. It's more about did God lead me to this? And how is he growing me so that I can reflect him to others around me because my heart is being changed? Then all of a sudden, it's no longer about how many jobs you've had. It becomes, did God lead you there? And how is he growing you so that others can see him? You're looking for your calling. How do you map something out to say step one, step two? Is it, is it uh, that well, analytical? It, it is in part analytical because it's very biblical. And uh, the Bible is full of very good advice, uh, all of which is recorded in the wonderful book. But let me give you a quick summary of it. First thing to do is to consider well. Just consider what the opportunity is. Second, consult with other people who are around you, got skin in your game, who, who are actually mm. going for you. Third, clarify the issue. Tweet it to yourself. 140 characters. I'm facing a job change. 140 characters. What is the real question? Because so often we forget what the question is and muddle ourselves up. Sure. And fourth, you need courage. 100%. These are practical steps. Rewatch it. These are four steps that you should use. However, the primary thing that you should have is not these four steps, though they are useful and you should use them. It is first and foremost here from Jesus Christ. Like if you have a personal relationship with your father and you know his heart, get to know his heart because his heart is for your good and is for your heart to look more like him so that others can see him so that they can become more like him. And if the whole world was a lot more loving, I think we would all like that world a little bit more. So stop making it about an analytical process and start getting on your knees and saying, Lord, what is your desire? And wait, be patient enough enough to actually hear from him and then have the courage to follow after it. By yourself in that regard, That's, whether you're a baker, sure. a, a sure. missionary, sure. you just go to work every day working on his behalf. That is absolutely true. And I'd add one little thing to it. There are three, three, uh, three things that I think makes a huge difference. And that's this, is that in that process, you need to know that you're loved by God, that you're known by God, and that you're called by God. Absolutely true. However, you can't just blanket statement over your life and just say, oh, I'm here, therefore God's called me here. Happenstance and the calling and the obedience of the Lord are two different things. Okay, we have free will. We can make decisions. And if our decisions are made without consulting the Father, we probably made the wrong decision. Can God bless us in those wrong decisions? Absolutely. He can pull us back to him because his heart is for us. Be honest with ourselves. How often have we actually made God the primary reason why you do anything. God loves them. Yes. And they know that that um, he's for them, but yeah. they have this fear that they're going to miss the call. And I didn't grow up with that call thing. What What is that and how is it different than a career? My dude, you've been talking for 16 minutes about the call and the why, and now you're asking the question, what is the call? The call on your life, first and foremost, is to have a restored relationship with Jesus Christ. Now we go into our practical life, and we're like, okay, well, I have to make some money to make an income. So, Lord, what is your desire for me in this thing? There was literally a situation, I needed to make some more money. I was working as a waiter, so I said, Lord, I need to make more money. I brought my need to him. I said, I need to make more money to uh, pay off my student loans. He said, get in your car. I got in my car. I drove. He said, turn here. I turned there. 
pulled into the strip mall. I saw a, a hiring sign at a Sprint store. He said, go in there and apply. I went in, got hired on the spot, didn't even ask what I was getting paid. The Lord divinely blessed me and paid off the debt that I needed to pay off. When when the catalyst to our decision making is Christ, the difficulties that we face, we don't have to worry about because those difficulties are first and foremost going to refine us. And second of all, we're going to be able to go through those difficulties in Christ's strength because he's called us, not just our strength, which will fail. Or uh, how does that relate to the why of the book? Well, so the, 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 the first bit is to remember the words of Jesus. I love this. The dude's like, so what's a call? And the guy's like, uh, so first of all, we're going to think about Jesus. Remember Jesus? You haven't chosen me. I have chosen you. And I've chosen you with a particular purpose. John 15, when he says... I've invested in you. I've made an investment in you Hmm. so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. He nails it. And I love, there was a couple things that Ken Costa said that I'm like, eh, but for the most part, you should go and watch the rest of this whole interview. That anxiety of missing suggests that I've got to be the one to make a whole, make my choice. And if I don't make that choice, I'm going to get it wrong. Bingo. Now, sometimes there's situations where like, I wasn't entirely sure. And I had to take a step of faith. I I think of this uh, scene in Journey to the Center of the Earth. And they have to walk across this cavern, but there's a bridge there that's invisible. And they had to take a step before the bridge would hold them up. Same thing is true with faith. If the Lord's killing you go in a direction and it seems impossible, go. See what happens. What if he does something that's impossible? How fun would that be? To recognize that there are stages in life. There are seasons. You're not going to stay at the same place forever, and that's okay. But maybe you will. All right, so I like the analogy inside of church. Like, there's a throne on your heart. Who sits on it? Who sits on it the majority of the time? Maybe Jesus does sit on the throne of your life for 10% of your life, but does he sit on it for the rest of your life as well? So whether you're working in the church, whether you're working in the business world, is your life surrendered to the Lord in everything that you do, or is it only surrendered in part, in which case it's not surrendered at all? Particularly in the modern world, there are seasons in which we will be working for ourselves, working for someone else, working in a voluntary organization. Exactly. It doesn't matter necessarily what you're doing. It matters who led you there. And then are you working at it to the best of your ability? If God's called you to to do something, do your work as if God is your boss. If you make your motivation, if you make your reason why you want to get out of bed every morning, yourself or someone else or people's expectations or anything, it's all going to fall apart. But if your reason for existing, your reason for going forward, your reason for doing things is because you have a close and intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, you are going to find yourself so much more happy and fulfilled in this life. Yes, there are difficulties, but there's difficulties no matter what. You can actually go through life and develop emotional strength and stability and spiritual strength and stability, and you can know the father of this universe that loves you. You're in the right spot, but your circumstances may not be affirming you in the way that you think they should. Hmm. That's such an important uh, such an important issue. Let me Let me try and tackle it this way. You will only know your why in and through others. I have to disagree with this final point. He goes on to talk about how you know your why in and through other people around you. And I think that throws up static between you and God. The only way that you know your why is if you hear it personally from the divine father of this universe. And if you haven't heard that, take the time to hear it. Imagine if you're lifting weights and your trainer came over to you and you said, I want to lift 500 pounds. And the trainer's like, okay. He would crush you. The Lord does the same thing emotionally for us. He doesn't want to just crush us immediately. So we go to him, I want to know what my calling is. And the Lord's like, your calling is going to require a lot more than what you have. And I need to train you to get there. Be patient with the Lord. You don't know what you're doing in your life right now. And you feel like your life is just swirling out of control. I would encourage you to take a second, stop, get down on your knees and just say, Lord, I want you to have control because me being at control doesn't work. Where are you? And help me to be there. Train me in what I need to be trained in. Maybe I need to lift 10 pounds spiritual weights for a year before I can lift a little bit more. Because it's not about where you are, what you're doing, how you're doing, how much money is in the bank. It matters how obedient is your life, how surrendered is your life to the Lord. Are you looking more like Christ every day or more like you? That is the real call of Christianity. And that answers your why. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I have the link for this um, down 
in the description. Hit that subscribe button, give it a like, give it a comment, tell me if you disagree or something like that, or if you agree. I'm really looking forward to seeing this thing grow and I'm trying to learn different ways on how to grow the channel. Uh, but at the end of the day, the channel grows the best when you guys take these video links and you share them with somebody else. When you take what you just experienced in this video and you say, you know what, I think someone else should be able to experience this and you pass this on, the greatest way that anything ever grows ever is word of mouth. And if you're watching this right now, you have the opportunity to help us out and we would greatly appreciate it if you would like to do that. God bless you guys.